Hello and welcome to Infinity Tarot and Oracle. Uh, my name is Mary and welcome to the Sagittarius viewers that have been led to this reading. Um, I just have a stack of cards with all the zodiac signs and I've been kind of just closing my eyes and flipping until I feel guided to pull one and um, the Sagittarius was the one that was pulled today. So we're going to do a reading for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. It might not resonate with everyone. Um, if it resonates, um, great. If not, then check your other signs or um, possibly another reading on YouTube is for you today instead of this one. Um, I am intuitive, um, intuitive empath, so I kind of pick up on feelings and energies quite greatly, and um, my readings are intuitive. I like to refer to the book when I'm using my fairy deck, which is the one I'm going to be using today, um, and also any messages that come through that I feel like are um, sent to me or channeled, as most people put it, um, I will pass that along also. So I was just clearing the space here with some a little bit of Palo Santo. And, and yes, I do know it's endangered. Um, so uh, I just had that from a batch that I bought a couple years ago before I knew that. So um, I do use it. So I just like to put that out there so people don't get upset thinking, why are you buying this knowing it's endangered? Nope, this was quite a while ago. <laughs> and I just, it lasts for so very long for me um, that you don't have to really... Um, I don't have to buy it much often because I just do like I did there and burn a little bit and put it out. Um, but anyways, I hope I covered everything. Um, I'm going to be, like I said, doing a love romantic love read. This is going to be for Sagittarius in the romantic love department. We're going to ask the fairies. They've been very active for me lately. So we'll see what they have to say for you. Okay. And this is a timeless reading. So when you are guided to it, you are meant to hear it. So now that I did a little shuffling, I would just like to, before I start pulling cards, I'd like to say a little prayer in advance, a little prayer of gratitude in advance, that I be a channel for messages, clear messages for the Sagittarius sign guided to see this reading or the cross watcher guided to see this reading. May I deliver the perfect messages of Sagittarius watching or anyone watching needs to know now about their romantic love life. Uh, I call upon my guides and angels and the guides and angels of those guided to watch this video to come together to help me deliver the best messages possible as to what the Sagittarius watching needs to know now. I call on any universal beings of love and light to join in this reading who may deliver great messages of help. And I declare this space free and clear of negative entities and energies. You are not welcome here at this time. Only beings of love and light are welcome. I'm sorry for the long intro, but I do like to say that for every time I do a reading, I do that. So um, let's see. Sagittarius. Fairies. What does the Sagittarius watching need to know now about their romantic love life? Okay. It's interesting because I had my eyes closed while I was shuffling and taking some deep breaths to pull in the energy. And um, when I opened them, the car, there was a card on the deck just facing upward, <laughs> the pook. So um, let's see here. We're going to find out what the pook has to say to you today. Okay. So the pook um, is a shape changer, um, good and bad, bad and good, paradox and resolution. And in a reading, um, it's saying it's time for resolution of seeming contradictions and paradoxes in the situation. Someone or some part of the situation is cloaked in confusion and our muddled thoughts must be stripped away, revealing truth. We just need to think about it. The information we need is now available to us. And as soon as we have that burst of insight and get it, it's time for us to make changes based on our newly clear understanding. I feel like this is saying there's going to be something coming in for you, Sagittarius, some understanding, some clarity that you've been waiting for. Um, and um, it says also, alternatively, it may be time for us to make a reality check on the good, bad labels we put on things. Make a list of the good, possibly even surprising things about this situation. And another list about the bad ones. 
if you're not in the habit of seeing the good and the good and the bad and the bad and the good having a having preferred a black and white world rather than one with color you may need help in learning to do this as well so um, the pook is asking you to take a new perspective um, there's it's time to resolve a situation in your love life it's time to resolve it um, we do need to in life pay attention to the fact that um, everything really does happen for a reason and and everything is always working out for the best I tell myself that always because in the end it always does somehow um, and every single situation has shaped and helped us to become what we're on our way to becoming and I know ultimately um, that's something that you know most people want to be the highest good for themselves so um, if you, you know like um, for instance I'm in the middle of a separation um, t a two-year separation from my husband that's been brutal um, I have really been through the ringer with it but what came good and what came out good in this situation um, I was able to make amends with my mom who I hadn't spoken to in a couple years and my dad who I hadn't spoken to in four years and reconnect with some old friends from school and it's been amazing. So it's been a journey and in, in the process, I really learned how to handle my trauma a lot better than I used to and I learned a lot of tools. I put some tools in my toolbox but the pook is saying it's time for resolution and the next card I had come out for you. Um, is the soul shrinkers card 55 um, fives are a number always a number of change but 55 would be a 10 so like it's something is completed something is like you're moving into a new cycle that that pook saying hey it's time to resolve this it's time to pay attention to your thoughts make some lists make yourself a plan kind of think this out meditate on it um, I always find that living in the question helps too so like um, what do I need to know now about this person? What do I need to know? What do I need to see? Where do I need to go? Ask this and just keep asking because when you ask, um, and I learned this from a very interesting class I took, um, it gives the universe space to send you the answer. If you don't ask, the universe can't send you the answer. So you need to ask. And when you stay in the question, it leaves possibilities endless for resolutions coming in. And the pook is saying, hey, it's time for resolution this in the situation. So the soul shrinker um, is about cruelty, malice, gossip, curses, destruction, and also can be about blessing. And I feel like maybe there's been some people that have been saying a lot of things, maybe behind your back, maybe to your face, muddling your thoughts about a love situation or a coming love situation if you're single. Um, maybe you've been telling yourself some things that aren't true, like I'm not worthy of love. I'm not deserving of somebody to stay. I'm not deserving of a forever partner that makes me happy and builds me up and shows me respect like childhood programming, you know, uh, becoming unraveled. So, um, you know, let's see here though. I just, I feel like there's just a perspective. I feel like something is really putting a damper on your love life. If you're currently in a relationship or a potential one, if you're not in one yet and you're single, or if you're waiting to uh, reunite resolution and needs to be made a resolution uh, an ending, something needs to be settled. Um, but let's see what else the soul shrinkers have to say. Critical and malicious thoughts and words are having detrimental effect on the situation and the people involved in it. What did I just say? Wow. Okay. Steps need to be taken to banish, the, banish this curse energy through love and compassion or at the very least through forgiveness and a refusal to accept the curse into oneself. Understanding the implications of this and transforming the behavior and feelings involved is a major, often very difficult step in, hu in, the, in human spiritual development. One of the things usually involved here is taking responsibility for ourselves and our own feelings rather than blaming others for the way we are. Another part of this process is to learn to be compassionate toward ourselves. If we can do that, it's much easier to not be horrible to others about, I'm so sorry, if we can do that, it is much easier not to be horrible to and about others. And see, I, like I said, there might be some childhood programming here. I'm not worthy of love. I'm not worthy of respect. I'm not worthy of somebody not abandoning me. Um, and 
these could be things you're saying to yourself without even really realizing it. Really pay attention to your self-talk so that this this healing can take place, moving needed that's needed to begin this new cycle that's about to start for you. Um, and also it says, um, this doesn't mean that we are supposed to be all sweetness and light all of the time. Constructive criticism given compassionately is a part of being real and reality is a good thing to be in touch with. So I feel like you need to be careful too about these energies that are not wanting happiness for you in the love department. Um, ask Archangel Michael or Archangel Raphael to come in and surround you with healing energy. Picture a bubble around yourself um, and it's deflecting anything negative that anybody is saying um, and doing that's trying to prevent your love interest from coming into your life, from coming back into your life or, to, or from healing the current situation that you're in. What else, please, for Sagittarius today in the romantic love department, fairies? Thank you so much so far. You've been very helpful. Anything else, please? All right. What did we get? We had a couple cards pop out here. Um, we had, um, and this this um, lettering is so very, like, scripty on these cards that I have a hard time reading it, I'm trying to get it to focus there. It looks like it might be God, God <laughs> 64, which is another 10. You've got two 10s here. So you're definitely going into a new cycle here for sure. Um, and you've got um, Nellis, the alchemist, or Nettie. I think it's Nettie, the alchemist, 27, which is a nine. So you're like, you're moving. You've got like, you know, the two 10s, something new is starting. Number nine, something is completed. And you're moving toward that 10, that new beginning. Um, let's find out here what card 64 has to say and when I get in the book I can try to pronounce the name better um the, like I said the writing on those cards is so scripty that sometimes it's hard for me to even make out what letter it is but it's pretty though I love these cards okay gwitcha <laughs> gwitcha <laughs> so 64 um so this he or she um stands for um a sudden shock unexpected events, a rude awakening. So somebody's about to be getting um, some shocking news or a rude awakening. Something unexpected is going to happen. Um, and in a reading, Guacha in a reading speaks to us of sudden, often violent breakdowns of existing structures, habits, patterns, and or attitudes. So that could be similar to the tower moment in the regular tarot. When we become too highly confined in our own self-imposed limitations, including desire for comfort and security, Guacha kindly breaks the structure retain, restraining us. Whether we think we want him to or not, on a soul level, we know this is to be necessary, but in everyday thoughts, we usually get pretty upset about it. However, breakdown can lead to breakthrough, and this is liberation, and we often haven't a clue what to do with it. This is usually the beginning of a period of confusion, even disorientation, while we search for a way forward. Although we may think we are simply searching for a way back to what we had have had before. And the recommendation with this card says, do not try to pick up the pieces and put them back like they were. Consider instead what you would like to build in that part of your life and this time to rem and this time remember to leave room for growth. Like I said, living in the question, leaving room for answers. Um, Sagittarius, I think there's some major upheaval um, and overhaul being done in the love department for you on all levels. And I feel like there's a lot of negative thought patterns that need to be let go of. So when you move into this new cycle, um, it can be built on a very solid foundation with you believing you do deserve and you have a right to have lasting love and people staying. Um, so, you know, something sudden and they're asking you to remember in the earlier cards to see the good and the bad, see it. If it, it's not always bad, we think it's bad because it hurts, but that's where the most growth comes. And I know people don't like to hear that. I don't like to hear it either when I've been going through what I've been going through, but it has been true thus far. <laughs> so, um, all right, now we're going to go to your card 27, Nellis the Alchemist. 
um, there's so much change in this reading. Um, this, this card stands for inner transformation and irrevocable change. See that this, this is telling you something's coming it's, and you're never going to be the same again after it. So be sure that you're staying in a positive mindset um, and making lists of things that you're grateful for, envisioning how you want your future to be and trying to stay away from thoughts of how it was because you don't want to carry that in and thoughts turn into reality. So um, you want to be sure you're keeping your thoughts really positive. Um, so in a reading, when Nellis turns up in your reading, get ready for things to happen. See, just like this one said, something's happening, something's coming, unexpected. And don't be afraid because it doesn't always have to be bad. This could be good news. This could be like this person that has hurt you really bad is going to come back and apologize. And it's going to change your whole world because in order to let them back in, you might have to let go of a lot of the things that you have come to know in this period without them. Um, so anyways, the next, it says the stuck becomes unstuck. The blocked begins to move. So there's movement happening, Sagittarius, for you greatly. You may have to run to keep up with the speed at which the situation around you is moving. You may also be surprised by the direction things and you are taking. You may find your plans, even your desires and dreams changing as the transformative process takes place. It might not have been in your plans, but later you will look back and say, wow, it wasn't what I expected, but it was just what I needed. Just like I was telling you earlier, when we have been through such an alchemical process, we can never go back to what we were before, which is probably just as well. So um, definitely something's coming in for you, Sagittarius. It's going to sort of rock your world and the love department. Um, really make you look at things differently things are going to be changing for the better because um, generally we don't have like these kind of tower moments come in so that our life can get worse might feel like it is while this is happening but really in reality it's laying the groundwork for something even better and so this reading is just loaded with change loaded with opportunity for growth um, something is coming unexpected for you in the love department, Sagittarius. Um, so be prepared for that. Be prepared whether it's good or bad. And no matter whether you're single or with somebody, there's big change coming. And um, be sure you're, like I said, um, while you're thinking about things, that you're thinking about how you want things to be. Envisioning how you would feel when they're the way you want them to be. Focusing on the good in someone rather than the bad, because if you focus on the bad, um, that's just what's going to keep coming back. And then we have the Maiden, card 14. The other day I did a, I think yesterday I did a reading for another um, sign, and I was like, Caden, <laughs> the Caden, huh? And then I got the book, and I'm like, oh my god, it's the Maiden. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> that writing, it gets me every time. Um, and so it was just funny. Um, I'm trying to remember what message she delivered here. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Auspicious beginnings, birth, growth, hope, joy. Um, Sagittarius, this tells me instantly you don't have anything to worry about. What's coming in the love department is going to be birth and growth. And there's hope in this situation. Um, there's a brand new beginning coming. It's going to be amazing. Whether you're single or with somebody, it doesn't matter. A brand new beginning is moving in for you and it's going to bring nothing but pure joy. Um, so um, it's going to kind of rock your world for a minute when you see things differently. Like, oh my God, when you have that light bulb moment. But um, joy is going to be surrounding you. I'll read it to you. The maiden signifies new beginnings and growth. You couldn't ask for a more auspicious card than this if you were beginning something new. Spontaneity, joy, growth, exhilaration, and promise for the future are signified here. We must also note that in the early stages of any process, there is vulnerability and a need for protection, shelter, and guidance. But there is also a magical impetus toward the burgeoning growth. Trust the process, but take care of all the details as well. The maiden is also the inner child who needs to be under the supervision of a competent inner adult in order for her to feel secure and loved. She is not happy when we spoil her. Consider what is growing in your life. Make a list of your hopes and dreams and plans. I was just saying all this. I can't get over it. Look for growth within you and think about how you can cherish and nurture that. Bless the growth you see around you. 
I tend to kind of walk around. I learned this from Abraham Hicks and be like, you are my favorite plant. You are my favorite tree. You are my favorite flower. You are my favorite star in the sky. And you can say it to every single one you see. It's just raising your vibration. Um, you want to make sure that you're keeping your vibration raised. And what was I telling you earlier? The inner child in you is struggling right now. Um, as the adult inside you is going through this transformation, talk to your inner child. And this really does help. Um, I had somebody teach me to um, put a pen, a pen in the hand that you normally write with and ask your inner child if it's okay to talk. Switch the, pa the pen. Why do I want to keep saying pan? Switch the pen to your non-dominant hand that you don't normally write with and write the answers with that back and forth between the hands because that takes you, putting it in the non-dominant hand that you don't normally write with um, takes you out of the egoic mind. So you can really get the answer that your inner child is going to give you and ask your inner child how he or she is doing. Ask them how they're feeling. I already told you I picked up on the fact that your inner child and wounding um, wounds that you may not even realize from your early childhood are there um, causing these cycles of, of unhappiness and love to repeat. So you want to heal, heal that inner child. You have to parent the inner child now because you're the adult and nobody else is going to do it for you. So let the inner child know that you're not going to let the, let anyone hurt him or her anymore. You are going to keep him or her safe. She is worthy no matter what anybody ever told her in the past that you are grown up now and you have learned that she, he or she is worthy of love, of respect, of kindness, of compassion, and um, try to give to others what you're missing, you know, because that tends to bring it in more so into your life. Um, so I think this is a lot of messages, um, Sagittarius. I hope that you enjoyed the reading. I would replay it if you can maybe take some notes down because a lot comes out and when things come to me, I save them. And sometimes I don't remember them myself after they're said because it comes so quickly. Um, but definitely, um, you've got a new joyful beginning coming in something very unexpected that's really going to make a change in your life and it's going to be for the better it's going to be like I said in the love department this is about the romantic love department not, not business not anything else I set the intentions this would be about love so these messages are all based on that if you do like this reading please click the like button and if you haven't done so please subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you learn when new readings are coming out so you don't miss anything um, and if you would like a personal reading from, uh, with me, I am offering one question readings right now as like a grand opening special to my channel. It's only $4.44 through my Etsy shop. And, um, I do it by video, uh, one question, and it usually ends up being about 12 to 20 minutes of me talking to you and giving you guidance on that question. Um, so, uh, get that while you can before the prices go up and you can read my reviews. They've been coming back really, really good. So I've been so excited about all of this. So thank you so much for being here with me through the whole reading Sagittarius. I am sending you lots of love, wishing you blessings for the rest of your life. And may you have happiness that you so deserve. Thank you. Bye.